every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. Open your Bible this morning to the 10th chapter of the book of Romans. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you this morning, Lord. Praise you, Father. We thank you for the healing mercies. We thank you that you are the healer. You have always, Father, provided healing for your people from the very, very beginning. Healing. Your name, Yehovah Rapha. I'm the Lord that healeth thee. <laughs> Glory to God. Think about it. If healing passed away, Jesus, uh, the Father would have had to have changed his name. And he said, I'm God, I change not. Amen. He's a healing God. He's a covenant making God. And Israel had a national covenant and we have a healing covenant. We have a forgiveness covenant. Praise God. Though a major article of our covenant is if we do sin, and we do, praise God, we have an advocate with the Father, even the righteous Jesus Christ, who is faithful and just to forgive us our sins when we confess them and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let's just start right here. If you have anything in your life that needs to be got, you need to get rid of, do it right now. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The, a covenant ha has a, a military atmosphere about it because it, it has, it, it's not based on feelings. It's based on that law of covenant. Amen. Amen. So, sir, I forgive. Thank you, sir. I'm forgiven. I receive it by faith. Glory to God. And now I receive my cleansing, sir. I'm cleansed. I'm forgiven. Glory to God. Now let's get on with business. It is, and it's not an unemotional thing because particularly if you are repentant and you are sorry for that messy, sorry, stupid thing you did, but you, the, the trap there is to go through all of that in first John chapter one, go through all of that and then, oh, but I don't feel forgiven. Uh, well, your feelings don't have anything to do with it because that's covenant. He said he would do it and he will do it and we believe it and we take it by faith. And even when those feelings come and say, no, no, glory to God. I wish I hadn't have done it, but that's over. Praise God. I did do it. I own it. And I just turn it loose. Glory to God. And I'm not going to touch it in my thought life anymore. Because if you spend a lot of time meditating on that and thinking about that, Meditation on, on that side of the ledger is called worry. And it'll interfere with your health and it will interfere with your receiving healing. So now, Romans uh, chapter 10. And let's begin with the, the ninth verse. Well, no, let's back up there to the sixth verse. But the righteousness which is of faith. Let's stop right there. What is faith? Uh, people use the word faith a lot. Like, well, what faith are you? That's not what we're talking about at all. That, that, no. Faith, and we, we'll, we'll see demonstration of it today. Faith is a very, very powerful spiritual force very powerful spiritual force. Spiritual forces are far more powerful than natural seen forces. Amen. Oh yeah. 
Well, we think about nuclear power being so, oh, so huge. But now, wait a minute. God spoke and created universes, solar systems, and it's still expanding at the speed of light. And the scripture says he did it by faith. It was that spiritual force. But now we see that he did it also by great wisdom. By great wisdom, he created it. Amen. And of course, we have the wisdom of God, but nowhere near on that level. Now there's coming a time when there will be a new heaven and a new earth and we get to be in on it. And at that time, I'm totally convinced the glorified ones and there'll never be any more glorified ones. There will be natural people. There will be in the new heaven and the new earth. God's plan will continue forever. There will be natural people born during the millennium, but no more glorified ones. And the glorified ones, you, me, the, the, the ones that accepted Jesus in a time of sorrow and combat on this earth. And we stayed with him right in the middle of all this hell. But then glory to God, the catching away of the church. I'm so excited about it. Hallelujah. Well, at that time, we'll have a great part of that. So now look at this. But the righteousness, which is of faith, speaks. Faith always speaks. We looked into that last night, yesterday evening, that faith speaks and then must exercise corresponding action It has to be believed, the word believed in the heart, spoken with the mouth, and accompanied with corresponding action. Now faith is on the job. The creative power has been released. All right. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? that is to bring Christ again from the dead. We know that Jesus went to hell. A lot of people have trouble with that. I got in a lot of trouble for preaching it. But I was in a little town in in the panhandle of Texas years ago and a three week meeting back there. Then it took, you know, it took two weeks to get the unbelief out and then a one week of great meetings. <laughs> and we, back then we all, we had two, three week meetings all the time. And we had rented a, 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 a an old drugstore building, had just a little small platform in there that we'd made. And uh, it was an evening service. And I, I, you know, I just preached Mark 11, 23, 24, and 25. And, and I got over into that Jesus went to hell and he suffered there. And, and, and then he was born again in hell and rose from the dead, the firstborn from the dead, firstborn of many sons. Hallelujah. And I'd been on this for a while. Well, you know, of course, the news got out. And the pastor of the Methodist church there, uh, some of his people came home and told him and they got baptized in the spin the spirit and they told him, I said, Jesus went to hell. Well, it made him mad. <laughs> Come find out later, he's an old truck driver and he got saved, you know, and he, he much of a man and well, oh, I love God. And but I, I, I didn't know all this. And he, here he came just, right in the middle of my message, this burst through those doors. This guy was big. <laughs> and here he came walking right up towards me. And I'm standing there like this. And I thought, 
uh oh. <laughs> and I just, I just said, you know, my, to, to the Lord and myself, I said, Lord, here he comes. <laughs> Man, I mean, he interrupted. He just come waltzing right up in front of me like this. The guy's big. And he said, I want a neck of bull. I want grandma bro. Glen Globe I laid my hands on him. Oh God. And he just <laughs> looked around and left. <laughs> so he, and he told me later. He went back to the went back to the to the church. He didn't he didn't go he didn't he didn't, he didn't go into the parsonage. He just went right straight to the church. And he got on his knees. I mean, he just got baptized in the Holy Ghost and didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> and, and he just, he said, he said, Copeland, I, I, I just started praying in tongues. He said, I just prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. He said, I just never had so much fun in Jesus. And he said, suddenly I stopped. And he said, I said, Jesus, did you go to hell? He said, you better believe it, big boy. If I hadn't, you would have. <laughs> Totally healed. <laughs> Glory to God. That settled it for him, wouldn't you think? What does it say in verse eight? Oh, I, I want to. I, no, I, I want to read that. I want to read into that again. But the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise: Say not in thine heart. Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ, the anointed one, back down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? Or what does faith say? Faith says, the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth. <laughs> Glory to God. And in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Now, those of, those of us that preach the word of faith, we didn't make that phrase up. And it's, it's not anything new. The apostle Paul preached the word of faith. What is that? It's the word of God that is anointed and brings faith when you preach it. Amen. So that if you will confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe on him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How th shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, that bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For he saith, saith Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, so then, so then, so he summarized it here, the word of faith, which we preach. So then faith cometh. There's no such thing as faith that does not cometh. Faith is coming right now. For what? Well, this morning, faith is coming for healing. Amen. Glory to God. So faith comes. Faith comes. Faith is coming right now. Yes. Just in these few moments, I sense a rising of the tide. Yes. Praise God. 
Faith is coming. It's happening. It's not something you feel. It is an inevitable result of teaching and preaching under the anointing, the word and the covenant of the living God. Faith arises. Faith just reaches up and takes hold of that. Amen. Amen. Now, so faith is here. Faith is coming. Faith is rising. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now then, let's go back over to the book of Exodus. Mm -mm -mm. Dear Lord God, I love his word. There's two places in Exodus, one in uh, 15, 26. And he said, if thou wilt diligently hearken, H-E-A-R, kin, hear kin. Okay, I'm listening. I didn't come up with that myself. Gloria came up with that. Thank you very much. And she'd look at me and say, here again. (laughs) I said, I'm here. (laughs) Hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. This is the voice of the Lord our God. This is my Bible. This is God speaking to me. I can have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Because this, my Bible, is God speaking to Kenneth. And all the way through it, I find out where God loves Kenneth. I find where God's healed Kenneth. I found out where God prospered, prospered Kenneth. I found this all out years and years and years ago. Now then, Exodus 23, he is the Lord that healed. Well, let me finish that. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, will do that which is right in his sight. Now, what is that? Walk in love, walk by faith, and keep his commandments. Well, we know from the New Testament that all of the commandments are satisfied with love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said that. And we live and walk in the commandment of love. We find that in John and in 1 John, the commandment of love. Amen. We know we have passed from death. Hey, what did I just say? We've passed from death. We've done all the dying we're ever going to do. Don't be afraid of death. I'm going to talk to you about that. A fear of death can can really, really hinder your healing. We'll deal with that. Do that which is right in his sight. We'll give ear to his commandments. Keep his statutes. I will put none of the diseases upon thee, which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now, did he bring disease on on the Egyptians? Yes, he did. It was a weapon. It was a covenant weapon. He's in covenant with these people. And he promised them deliverance. Amen. So what did he do? God has never physically put sickness on anyone. Well, if he put his hands on them, it would heal them. <laughs> if he spoke, it would heal them. So what, what did he do? He just simply lifted his hand. Now, they were walking in direct opposition to his people. So what happened to Pharaoh when they went through the Red Sea? God congealed that water. Well, he wiped that whole group out. All he had to do was just relax and they drowned. You see the concept? Well, sure. So anyway, Now then, Exodus 23, this is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Exodus 23, 25. 
and you shall serve the Lord your God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Now, wait a minute. Don't start reading with that verse. It doesn't make sense if you do. Go back up to the 23rd verse. For my angels shall go before you and bring you to the end through and so forth. And so my angel. Now let's read this like it's written. You shall serve the Lord your God and your angels shall bless your bread and water and I will take sickness from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young or have miscarriages nor be barren in thy land and the number of thy days I will fulfill. Your angel will bless your bread and water. He didn't say I'll bless your bread and water. He said he will bless your bread and water. All you got to do is back up two verses and find out who he is. So now back up further than that and find out what that angel's job was and, and, and what he was doing. Because why? Because Moses said, we're not going up these people with the peaceful without you. We, we can't do it. We have to have help. He said, okay, I'm, I'm assigning this angel to you and he will bless your bread and water and I will take sickness from the midst of it. So one day I was driving out my driveway. I have, I have a, you know, well, as you've already heard many times <laughs> that we took over this, this uh, Naval Air Station operated by the Marine Corps and, and it already had the airport on it. And so um, Gloria and my home, which of course the ministry owns, and, uh, so, and the driveway is, is nice. It comes out and it's, and it's you know, it's, it's more than just a little small driveway. So I'm driving out, I was driving out the driveway and this verse hit me. I stopped and I hollered, I'll never be sick again in my life hereafter forever. Sickness has been taken from the middle of me. Glory to God. And one of my granddaughters had a miscarriage. I sent her that verse and I sent it to her in a modern translation. It says, you will never have miscarriage. She said, I'll never have another one. And you'll never have anybody barren. Any of you girls wanting babies, there it is right there. You'll never be barren. You'll never be barren. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? He's taken sickness from the midst of us. It is gone. Sickness is gone. You know what gone is? G-O-N-E, gone. The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast study notes will help you dive deeper into these powerful word-based teachings. Get all five days of notes at one time. Use them during the week for your personal study time. Download them free at kcm.org notes. Create a special family devotional time to follow along with the notes as you watch the broadcast. Study the scriptures with your children and begin instilling God's word now. Use these notes to build your faith library and build up a heritage of faith. God's Word is life and healing to me. I am strong. My life is full of God's wholeness and abundant blessings. Become God inside minded. Think like He thinks. Choose the healing and wellness He has promised you in His Word with the Harvest of Health Package. This life-changing set of resources includes And Jesus Healed Them All, a book by Gloria Copeland. God wants you well and Jesus has already healed you. So take hold of his word as your prescription for life and health. The Healing Scriptures CD builds up your spirit in the word. Get rid of unforgiveness, choose to walk in love and experience wholeness as you listen to anointed scriptures read by Kenneth Copeland. What you plant in your heart grows. The Harvest of Health, a mini book by Gloria Copeland, encourages you to take God's promises and confess them for your healing every day. It's time to reap a harvest of health. Request your free Harvest of Health package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries at kcm.org slash tv special 
or when you call 800-600-7395. Plant the seed of God's Word into your heart and receive your harvest of health. Allow God's healing power to flow into and through your body. Offer good for 60 days. Outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a gift for you. It's called the Harvest of Health Package. It's two books by Gloria Copeland and a CD by Kenneth Copeland. Now listen, Jesus is your healer and he wants you well. God's perfect will for you is to live continually in divine health. So the time to start feeding your spirit with the word of God is not when you're faced with an emergency or a crisis. No, you prepare now while you're healthy and strong. And Gloria Copeland shares how to plant God's word of healing in the good soil of your heart on a daily basis. And as you diligently sow the word, your faith will grow and a harvest of health will keep coming and keep coming. And that's the way to live in divine health. So to receive your free healing package, go to kcm.org. And this week starts the 2021 Word Explosion Military Salute. It runs September 2nd through the 4th in Columbia, South Carolina. Come join Kenneth Copeland and special guest Chaplain A.L. Downing, Bill Winston, Pastor George Pearsons, and Bishop Herbert Bailey. It will be three faith-filled, power-packed days of the Word of God ministering to our active and retired military personnel. So come and experience God's presence. Come build your faith on the Word. Now this event is free to attend and it's open to the public, so make your plans to be there. For all the information on speakers' schedule, and service times, go to kcm.org and make it a priority sometime this year in the, in the coming days and weeks to get into one of these events and find out what it's like to step into an atmosphere of faith where you're hearing the Word of God being preached and growing, enlarging, and expanding on the inside. You will be so blessed when you come to a KCM event. Thanks so much for joining us today, everybody. We'll see you again next time. Until then, remember that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us today on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For more information on Kenneth Copeland Ministries, go to kcm.org. While you're online, you can also request a free copy of today's broadcast on DVD, CD, or download it to your computer or mobile device. Continue to grow in your faith in God and live in the wisdom of His Word. 2021 is the year of the local church, a year of divine healing, divine health, divine prosperity, and divine recovery. Take the word of faith wherever you go with the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. Build your faith through powerful articles from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and other guest authors. Read encouraging stories and testimonies of real life victory and equip your kids for spiritual growth in Commander Kelly's Corner. Download a digital copy for your tablet or mobile device. Sign up for your free monthly subscription or download your copy today at kcm.org.